Good morning, dear students. In this session, we will take a look at the biography of Andrew Marvel. Andrew Marvel is prescribed for the students of BA Part 1, English Literature. You have to study his poem, Thoughts in a Garden, in detail. But first, a look at the biography of Andrew Marvel. The English poet and politician Andrew Marvel, whose dates are 1621 to 1678, that is, he was born in the year 1621 and he died in 1678, one of the writers of the 17th century, most admired by the 20th that is 20th century, composed lyric poetry which is sensuous, witty, elegant and sometimes passionate. Were Andrew Marvel not a major poet in his own right, he might be regarded primarily as a fascinating transitional figure. His work is deeply under the influence of John Donne and the metaphysical school yet it shares its formal elegance and smoothness with the tribe of Ben, the poets who clustered about the influential Ben Johnson and came to form the Cavalier School. We will learn more about the Cavalier poets later on. Furthermore, he was a protege and disciple of John Milton whose intense and broad-ranging participation in Renaissance philosophical, poetic and theological traditions find its counterpart in his own work. Like Milton, he wrote considerable poetry devoted to contemporary political questions. And he wrote verse satire akin to, meaning like, that of John Dryden, who is generally seen as the leading spirit of a new age. Marvel was born on March 31st, 1621 at Winstead in Holderness, Yorkshire. This is a region in England. His father, a Calvinistic Anglican clergyman, meaning he was a priest, became master of the charter house and almshouse and preacher at Holy Trinity Church in Hull where the family moved in 1624. The poet's mother was to die in 1638 and his father in 1641. In 1633, Marvel began his studies at Tr Trinity College, Cambridge, where he remained until 1641, receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1639. Late in his Trinity years, a plausible tradition holds, Marble was converted to Roman Catholicism by persuasive Jesuits, who were, but was promptly brought back to the Anglican faith by his father. By the outbreak of the Civil War in 1652, Marvel's academic career had ended short of his completing a Master of Arts degree, perhaps as a result of his father's accidental death, and he began a four-year sojourn, means a travel in a way, in Europe, probably tutoring the son of well-to-do family. First works of Marvel. Though in poems written between 1645 and 1649, he had envis evinced royalist sympathies, Marvel seems to have been attracted by the strong personality of Oliver Cromwell. And in 1650, he wrote an Horatian ode upon Cromwell's return from Ireland commonly acknowledged a masterful piece of political poetry. This ode has occasioned some controversy as to the degree of unqualified admiration with which the poet regards the military harshness of the Puritan general. For two or three years, beginning in 1651, 
Marvel was tutor to Mary Fairfax, daughter of Lord General Fairfax, a retired Commonwealth general who lived at Nun Appleton and where he wrote some memorable poems. Among them are the lovely Music's Empire and Upon Appleton House to My Lay Lord Fairfax, a complex and sophisticated compliment to Mary Fairfax consisting of almost 400 octosyllabic couplets in which the landscape description serves emblematically to convey political and philosophical ideals. His political career. In 1653, Milton attempted unsuccessfully to have Marvel made his assistant as Latin secretary a position like that of Secretary of State, in other words, something like the Home Minister, to Cromwell. Instead, Marvel became tutor to a young ward of Cromwell named William Dutton. He tutored first at Eton, it's a famous uh, public school, an elite school of England in the house of a man who had been to Bermuda and may possibly have provided the inspiration for the charming Bermudas in which a tropical island is presented as a Puritan paradise. Later, his tutoring duties took him to France. In 1657, Marvel was appointed Latin secretary himself and remained in office until the restoration of the Stuart monarchy in 1660. He continued to write political poetry, much of it celebrating his admiration for Cromwell, such as the first anniversary of the government under Oliver Cromwell in 1655 and upon the death of O.C. in 1658. In 1659, he was elected Member of Parliament for Hull and served in the House of Commons for the rest of his life. Unlike the tempestuous Milton, however, Marvel was not an embattled and passionately committed politician, but rather a quiet civil servant. In 1662, he served with, a British, with the British Prime Minister in Holland. In 1663, he embarked on New Year, two years of diplomatic mission to Russia, Denmark and Sweden. The latter years of his life were devoted to his service to the government, to the composition of political satire in verse, and to the writing of prose dealing with contemporary issues. He is said to have protected Milton from the vindictiveness of the new royal government after the restoration, not the least of his contributions to poetry. He died on August 16, 1678, of a fever compounded by medical treatment, still a bachelor. In 1681, his housekeeper published miscellaneous poems by Andrew Marvel, Esquire, the basis of his reputation as a poet. Assessment of his poetry. To the student of cultural history, Marvel's poetry is a fascinating amalgam of intellectual currents of his age. Stoicism, Christian Platonism, anti-scholastic mysticism, and an ang Anglican sense of the order and harmony of nature. To the historian of poetry, his achievement is remarkable for its balance between a never abundant wit and dramatic atmosphere reminiscent of Donne, a precision and verbal elegance modelled on Horace and other classical poets, a detachment and metrical sophistication shared with the cavaliers and a sensuous evocation of landscape shared with the classical pastoral tradition. Most of the finest poems seem to have been composed in the 1650s. 
few of them are without central images of gardens perhaps the most famous of marvel's lyrics is to his coy mistress had we but world enough and time this coyness lady were no crime but at my back i always hear time's winged chariot hurrying ne- near and yonder all before us lie deserts of vast eternity like many of marvel's best poems it masks extraordinary subtlety and complexity beneath a surface of smooth and deceptively simple octosyllabic couplets it is in fact as perfect an example of the metaphysical mode as anything by dun and for all its cool and witty tone a passionate lyric similarly powerful is the garden the poem we are going to study in detail whose sensuous images constitute a complex blending blending of renaissance traditions that bear on the rival virtues of the active and the contemplative life one of the most famous images in the poem is that of the mind that ocean where each kind does straight its own resemblance find withdrawn into itself and detached from the world annihilating all that is made to a green thought in a green shade this is about the life and works of andrew marvel the poet in the next session we'll take a look at the poem the garden or thoughts in a garden in detail thank you